Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So excited to have you here today. And for today's video, I'm going to share with you um, some DIYs and hacks that you can do using contact paper from Dollar Tree. You can use contact paper for so many things. And I'm more than happy to share with you um, some of my ideas and things that I have done. You can get contact paper from Dollar Tree and they have so many different designs that you can choose from, like faux marble, um, like this wooden texture that I love. And I'm going to be using a lot of that in this video so I hope that you like these ideas that you can get inspired if you like them a big thumbs up make sure that you are subscribed to this channel that you follow me on all my social media pages as well as my other channel just on my home we post a new video so make sure that you check that all of the links are going to be in the description box of this video and every single one hope that you are ready let's get started let's do it together Okay, for this project, I'm going to be using this round sign from Dollar Tree. It's from the fall season, but I'm pretty sure Dollar Tree brings these type of signs in this shape for every season. So keep an eye on that. And what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to remove the piece of twine and the tape and the bow that it has. Now I'm going to be using some contact paper to cover this sign because I want it to have like a wood texture. And this is a great hack that you can do with this contact paper. They come like in a wood looking like this one or Dollar Tree have them in like a marble look and so many options that you can choose to recreate these same projects. What I'm going to do is to cut a small piece of contact paper the same size that I need for this project and I'm going to start sticking these on the back side of this sign and I'm going to use this Cricut tool to make sure that um, it doesn't have any bubbles or air between my sign and the contact paper. Once I have that part ready and I have no bubbles on my project or anything and it has like a smooth surface, I'm going to um, cut all of the edges of the contact paper to have like a round shape and then I'm going to start cutting the contact paper because I need to fold these. And the easiest way to do it is um, with this step. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut everything and then I'm going to stick my contact paper as best as I can. Once that part is ready and my sign is covered with this contact paper, you can use these for so many things. This time I'm going to use it as a lid. I have this beautiful basket with the legs and I really like it, but I have two and I want one of these um, to look like a table. So what I'm going to do is to use the product that I just did as a lid for this basket and it's going to work perfect. It's the same size and I'm going to put it on the top. Then I can decorate it. I'm just going to put like a small jar with some candle holders and a planter or you maybe can put a lamp. You can use this as an inspiration for you to do a, like a side table or coffee table or something like that and make it look like a wood texture using this type of contact paper. Okay, the next project is super easy. I'm going to recycle these um, like cereal box that I have at home and depending on the size of your cereal box is the size that is going to be your project. I'm gonna try to make like a magazine holder. So for that, I'm going to trace some lines um, and I'm, then I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut it. Um, these have to look like um, one side is longer than the other one so that way it's easier for you to put like the magazines or maybe notebooks or things like that or use these as an organizer for your office or many things. 
once I cut my cereal box I'm going to be using some contact paper and like I said Dollar Tree have so many options of contact paper that you can use I really like all of the wood textures that they have and this is another option that they have it's a little bit darker but I really like it and what I'm going to do is to measure everything to cut my contact paper and then I'm going to start sticking these on my box this is a very thin box so it's going to be a little bit difficult to add the contact paper but take your time and try to avoid any air bubble once you're done adding the contact paper if you see any air bubble you can always use like like a needle or something pointy um, and make a small hole on the air bubble and that is going to work too or if you want to try you can use like a heat tool to avoid those air bubbles and in the next projects i'm going to show you how you can do that technique with the heat tool Once I'm done covering this magazine holder, I'm going to fold all of the edges and cut any excess. You have to work with your contact paper as you are trying like to wrap a gift. once I'm done covering these um, I can use it now in my office I'm going to be adding notebooks that I just have and I use all the time on my office and this is going to work perfect on my desk I can put it on the drawers or on the top close to my computer it's going to look beautiful it has this wooden texture that I really like nobody's gonna know that is a cereal box and it's a super budget friendly idea that you have to try In this next project, I'm going to show you a really cool and easy idea that you have to try. You're going to need one of these frames from Dollar Tree. You can get like a photo frame or a mirror. And then I'm going to use a piece of cardboard. I'm going to cut it the same size and shape of my frame. And that's what I'm going to use to add my contact paper. I'm going to add the contact paper on this piece of cardboard. And then I'm going to cut and fold everything to have the same size and shape. Make sure that you have zero air bubbles on your project and that everything looks nice and smooth. Now, because this cardboard is very thin, I want to add something to make it a little bit stronger. So I'm going to be using some popsicle sticks and I'm going to add those on the back with hot glue. Now it's time to stick everything together. I'm going to stick this piece of cardboard on my frame using some hot glue. Now that you have that part ready, you can do so many things on this sign. I decided to add a Cricut decal that I did that says whole cocoa and this is perfect for the Christmas season or the fall. But of course you can use it on any time of the year. If you, want, if you have your Cricut, you can write whatever you want or you can paint something with acrylic paint or shock paint and it's going to work just fine. You maybe can add a stencil from Dollar Tree too. So you can do an easy super fun sign using a frame and contact paper from Dollar Tree. Thank you. 
cylinder glass base from Dollar Tree I really want to give it a different look and not see that it is glass so for that I'm going to be using contact paper and this contact paper is from Dollar Tree and it looks like wood texture and I just love that and I'm going to measure and cut the piece that I need with my paper trimmer just to make it perfect and straight and I'm just going to stick it on my whole vase. You need to check the edges of the vase and just make sure that the contact paper is well folded on the edges to make it look nice. From there, I decide to place a piece of this blue tape and just stick it around my base. And I decide to use my Waverly shock paint in black color and I just going to paint over the contact paper. To dry the paint in my projects, I always like to use my heat tool and once it is dry, I can remove the blue tape. You can add more details to your vase if you want. I just left it simple and modern um, and I just put this eucalyptus bush from Walmart and voila, this will be the result. And I just love how easy it was to do and how cute it looks. Let's get started with this project by cleaning all of the mess, all of the things that I have in my laundry room. I know I had a big mess. I have all of my dog stuff too. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna clean all of that and then I'm going to start measuring. I need to measure the long and the width of my shelf because I'm going to be doing like a small makeover on this. For that I'm going to be using this big and giant piece of cardboard that I have at home. Um, I get it from um, a sofa that I bought on Ikea. So I'm going to be using these to be able to create my shelf. I'm going to measure and then make lines to be able to cut these as straight as possible and with the measurements that I need for my shelf. I'm going to be cutting these very easy using these um, tool that I get. It's from Cricut, but you can also use a knife and you, and you can use a piece of cardboard that you have at home or maybe you can use a few pieces of foam board that you can get from Dollar Tree. Once you have your cardboard cut, I'm going to be covering these with these. Um, it's like a contact paper that you can get from Dollar Tree. You can find these on the kitchen section. Um, so I'm going to be using these to cover the whole cardboard and this is going to give it like a wooden look. Um, it's super easy to do and I'm going to be removing all of the air bubbles that has with these tool from Cricut but you can use maybe like a debit card or something like that um, to make sure that it's not going to have any air bubbles. And because this is super and extra long, I'm going to be using two rolls to cover my cardboard. make sure that you fold all of the sides um, to the inside of the cardboard and then I need these um, to have like a base and then in something to cover the front of the shelf so I make sure that I fold my piece of cardboard too to have that shelf um, look and then I just add a little bit of hot glue to make sure that um, it stays in the shape that I want to. 
then I just have to add that on the top of the shelf that I have in my laundry room it fits perfect it cost me only two dollars to do it and it looks amazing using this Dollar Tree trinket box and I love the shape it has but I want to change the color and to make it look more like neutral I'm going to be removing the lid and I'm going to mix a little bit of black paint and blue paint color just to try to create like a navy color with my Waverly shock paint Once I have the color that I want, I'm going to be painting my trinket box and I'm going to give it like two pink coats just to make sure I'm covering everything very well. Then for the lid, you can leave it in gold color if you like. I think it looks very good, but I want to change it for something more like my style. And I'm going to be using this Dollar Tree contact paper that looks like wood. And I'm going to cut a small piece in a circular shape. I'm going to be covering the lid with this contact paper, but if I want to do that, I'm going to probably going to have a like, lot of bubbles and folded sides left. Um, so just to avoid that, you can use a heat tool and apply heat to the contact paper. The contact paper is going to get much more like elastic and easy to handle and you can glue all the edges on the lid much easier and it will look better. Um, just try to be careful not to put too much heat on it on the contact paper because you don't want to break the contact paper. Guys, a heat tool not only works to dry a surface, you can use it for many other things and of course in the description you can find a link of this heat tool and also my Amazon favorites just in case that you want to verify them and see what I like to buy from Amazon. Once you have covered the lid on the top, you just have to cut off the excess contact paper and then check that everything looks perfect and make sure that all the edges are stick well to the lid. Once you finish, this is how the lid um, looks like and how everything looks together. And I have another one um, and I really love the colors that this one have. The colors are going to be a little bit different from each other. So I decide to leave it like that with that pattern and just cover the lid with contact paper. You can place like a small piece of youth cord, tie it with a knot like this and then you can make it look better if you can put fire on it. So I'm going to put a little bit of fire on my youth cord and that will change the color a little bit and it will look better. And then I'm going to glue it on the lid of the trinket box with hot glue and then I did the same on the other one. Once finished, this will be the result of this project and 
it is super simple easy and i really love how they look and i really like that the leads looks like wood and have that high-end looking and it looks like more high quality um, and you can use them for decoration and keep things inside project I'm gonna try to recreate this faux olive leaf potted plant from this new collection and I think it's so cute so I'm gonna try to recreate these using this vase that I have for a really long time I love the shape it has I don't like the color so I'm gonna try to make these um, look like wood I'm going to be using this contact paper from Dollar Tree and I have been doing this technique so many times and I think it's so amazing I'm going to be sticking this contact paper on my vase but because it's not like straight it has this type of shape that I love but it's kind of tricky when you work with contact paper to make it look straight so for that you're going to need some heat and I'm going to be using my heat tool this is the key for this project I'm going to be adding the heat on the contact paper just for a small amount of time and it's going to make the process so much easier because the heat on the contact paper is going to um, make the contact paper stretch and that way is going to be so much easier to add and form the shape of the vase that you have without any marks or bubbles or anything like that and trust me it's so easy it's going to take you some time to kind of figure out how to work with these but i really like it and it turned out amazing it looks like a wood vase and of course the link of the heat tool is going to be in the description box and on my amazon favorites and make sure that you cut all of the excess of contact paper that you may have on top and like inside of the vase and on the bottom of the vase you don't need to cover the whole inside of the vase don't worry about that because we're going to be covering that in just a second Once you have your base ready, I'm going to be adding some stones to give some weight and then I'm going to be adding some moss on top to cover them. I like I prefer moss and stones, so yeah, that's what I did that. And then I'm going to be using some olive branches, of course. Um, and I got this from Amazon too, that have the best quality and the best price. Um, this is just like some really small branches from a really big branch that you can get in the package. So I just cut some pieces and I'm going to be adding them inside of the planter. And this is how my project turned out. Super easy, it looks amazing. You can do it and make it a little bit bigger with longer branches and I want you guys to let me know if you have tried this technique before working with a heat tool and contact paper um, I think it's so cool so let me know in the comments if you have tried this technique and if not make sure that you check the links to get your heat tool now because you're not going to have regrets on that okay my loves this is how all of these projects turn out I hope that you like them let me know in the comments if you have tried some of these hacks before and let me know if you want to see more um, more of these hacks and things that you can do with contact paper i absolutely love to work with contact paper so let me know that in the comments make sure that you are subscribed to this channel that you follow me on all my social media pages my web page jasomai.com and my other channel just on my home guys we post a new video so make sure that you check that on the links in the description box and thank you so much for the love and support see you in the next one Mwah. bye guys <laughs>